America is a spiritually and psychologically unhealthy society that is ruled by money, materialism, and racism. I said America is a spiritually and psychologically unhealthy country that is ruled by money, materialism, and racism. I said America is a spiritually and psychologically unhealthy country that is ruled by money, materialism, and racism. That's why we build in the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. That's why we build in the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Heaven on earth. You're going to have a place, an oasis that you can come to and be around other conscious Africans. You're going to have an oasis where you can be around other conscious Africans. And I'm going to say this. Some of you don't identify as African, and that's okay. But the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy is for African people. So if you come to my school talking about we ain't from Africa, we Asiatic black men. If you come to my school talking about we ain't from Africa, we from Israel. If you come to my school, we ain't from Africa, we Cherokees and Choctaws and Chickasaws. If you come to my school with any of that anti-African stuff you believe in, you will be put in the book of Negroes and banished from the campus for the rest of your life. I'm just letting you know right now. I'm just letting you know right now. I'm just letting you know. If you come to my school with that anti-African talk, you will be banished from the school and put in in the book of Negroes, those of you who got a problem with mixed race Africans, those of you who have a problem with mixed race Africans, those of you who have a problem with Latina Africans, if you come to my school with your tribalistic, sectarianistic, sectarianistic separation segregation views on African people, you will be put in the book of Negroes and you will be banished. Heaven on earth means everybody will be at peace on that campus. It might only be one block. It might only be one street. It might only be four buildings, but that is our black wall street. That is our black Wall Street and you will respect what we stand for or we will throw your ass out and you're never coming back again. You got one time to disrespect me or my school. You got one time to disrespect me or my school and you are out. Hello. Good morning, Sister Selena. Where are you based at, Queen? Hi, good morning, Dr. Lamar. I'm based in New York City. New York City. Go right ahead with your question, beautiful. Okay, I have a, a question regarding... Um, I've been following, following you for almost a year, and I see your stance on ADHD. Um, I have a daughter who has had issues since she was very young. Um, I would say from about kindergarten she's 20 years old now and during my research over the years i found that adhd and pthd are basically um they exude the same symptoms say that again adhd and what was the other disorder P ptsd and P children ptsd and adhd 
Yes, and, and children, they have the same symptoms. Um... PTSD can have some ADHD type symptoms, but an ADHD person does not resemble a PTSD. PTSD is serious anxiety uh, provoking disorder where the person experiences recurring experiences from their past and they can't delineate between the dream or the memory and reality. So PTSD is much, 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 much more serious than ADHD. Uh, you know, a PTSD person can have ADHD symptoms. I can see that. But if mm -hmm. you just, if you're just ADHD, you don't share, you don't have anything in common with a PTSD person. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on um, just some research that I've come across over the years and, okay. and children specifically. I read and I even spoke to a, a, another provider about the symptoms being the the same but um through the years i've tried um you know medications different therapies to treat the adhd and there was no response so i believe that her issue is um pd P P ptsd ptsd and as a result of what though what would have been the traumatizing incident that would have triggered the ptsd um there was some inappropriate um sexual encounter with her father unfortunately from a very young age and okay you know back then and she's had, aware of it like she has expressed uh memory of it uh when she was younger she did but at I would say a few years ago, she claims to not remember anything, and, and she rather not. She says she she rather not remember it. But um, I, I believe she does. And the 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 worst thing about it is that, you know, since she was an infant, she's been obsessed with her father, and her father has never reciprocated. Um, around these allegations, she went to school and said something, and that you know. Um, conjured up uh, a child, you know, uh, in, in, an ACS case. And there was, you know, a litigation for years with family court ACS. Everything came back unfounded because she just stopped talking. But um, her behavior academically was on a decline and she just wasn't uh, progressing. So I would say about the fifth grade, I got her evaluated and um, the, you know, the, the report back the, the initial report was depression. Um, okay, that, th that fifth grade evaluation you got, that was clinical or school-based evaluation? School-based. Okay, school -based. now you mentioned depression. We don't diagnose depression in schools. Mm -hmm. So did she get an outside evaluation also? Because we can't give mental disorders in the school. Uh, depression, ADHD, PTSD, those are mental disorders. They have to be diagnosed in a clinic or a hospital or private practice. We can't do those in school. We're limited to the learning mm -hmm. disabilities in the school setting. Yeah, I, I, I do understand that, but that's something that, that did come back as a result of the, uh, the school psychologist um, evaluation. And another... Um, you know, it was her very first one. Another diagnosis was uh, they found her to have a very high IQ. They found her to have superb memory and a learning disorder. The, the learning disorder was never diagnosed because I I'm not sure why, but, you know, over the years, um, she has never progressed. I had her in, you know, um, counseling outside of school as well as, you know, what she got in school when she got the IEP. And she's really just had she 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 has not been on um, she hasn't had a lot of progress for years. I'm gonna fast forward to the last four years of high school, which she did not progress. And at that time, you know, I was ready to give up. And the the very next thing that I did before I, I gave up was I, I went for an impartial hearing where I was able to get her into a private school via the board of education funding. question question okay mm -hmm. that approved private school that you got what is her disability for which she receives an iep what is the primary disability because i heard adhd i had ptsd i had learning disorder that when you say learning disorder that's mm -hmm. definitely diagnosed outside of school because in school it's learning disability but uh right. Right. W what's the primary disability for iep purposes as of right now, is ADHD and depression. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because based on, okay, in that depression, what do you think? I think ADHD is the least of the concerns here. I think yes. that's the least of the concerns here. What, what is the depression coming from? Um, like I said, it's from, from when she was an infant, she was really obsessed and, and just loved her father. And with all the traumatic experiences that she's had with her father, um, he's never been, you know, he, he's never reciprocated. She just misses her father. She wants her father in, in, in her life. I believe that he was in her life in a positive and, you know, way. That Why does she not have flourished. contact with him? He, um, from what I've learned about him from uh, different, you know, providers that I've spoken to uh, her, spoken with about her, um, he's just a really harsh and, and mean person. He has, to me, he exhibits uh, behaviors of, of narcissism. So um, he just treats her really bad. And, and she has given him chance over and over and over again and being that she's you know she does have a uh, history of suicidal ideation and a couple of attempts and one of them was she has attempted person. suicide yes when she was a teenager when she was a teenager and that stemmed from what one was an impulsive um act she there was commotion going on around her and she went and took um she she was on actually on a, an antidepressant at the time and she just went and took the, the, the whole bottle and says, you know, she figured things would be better if um, she wasn't here. Right. But what caused it, though? What was the incident for why she took the pills, why she was going to self-harm? What happened? What was the incident? Uh, one of the, uh, it was just a, 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 I won't say a fight. It was an argument in a house between my son and I when that particular incident Okay, your son. How old is the brother? Uh, right now, uh, he's he's four years older than her. And she's how old right now? Right now, she's 20. Okay, and the brother doesn't have a history of touching his sister, correct? No, not at all. And what is the nature? How is their relationship? Um, it's strained. Um, based on what? Just based on, I would say... Uh, just how they relate um, with her being depressed for as long as she has been there are certain uh, aspects of living with someone who has major depressive disorder um, you know some you know things that it, it, even outside of major depression just like um, her lack of consideration for you know like with, with siblings you ate all my you know I a, a bag of potato chips on the table and you ate more just things like that you know just um so it, it was a lot of that going on and they you know the last fight that they had was you know it had to do something it had to do with something as menial as as food so um the but it was a very heated thing so you know they really they haven't recovered basically okay um, is your daughter getting therapy right now? She hasn't gotten therapy since 2020 because it's what? been ex extremely hard via uh, my private insurance, private providers, even through the counseling services that she, you know, is supposed to receive as a part of her IEP. Um, I've, I, I would say since 2020, I've contacted maybe close to 200 providers private and through the school and it's you know either they're not taking uh new patients they're not taking insurance they're not um you know seeing children it's just one excuse after the other it's, it's been a really difficult and, and uphill battle trying to get her into counseling okay what, what city do you live in i'm in new york city okay you might want to check with the county mental health office because normally most states, cities offer some kind of low cost or free mental health service. Mm -hmm. So, because she needs a therapist. How old is she? She's 20 now, right? She's 20 now. And this, you know, she, she's still, she's still in um, 
school because she has, you know, legally the right to be there until about 21 within New York City. And she is just, you know, trying to finish up, the, not even trying to finish up the 11th grade, but it's been a, an uphill battle trying to get her just to, to complete. And, you know, yesterday she said it to me for the first time in a long time, you know, when I was asking her about, you know, classes that she wants to take over this summer. And she says, um, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, I tried to explain to her the importance of at least having a diploma so that she can, you know, if you don't want to go to college, at least, you know, you want to be able to work somewhere where you want to work that requires minimum high school diploma. So she, um, you know, finally said to me, well, she didn't, um, imagine herself even being here up, up until this point and, and she doesn't know how long she's going to be here you know basically living so uh, uh, basically a high school diploma is not her um, focus right now so I you know there was a lot of ideation a few years ago it stopped and now it's you know it's starting again and I, you know I noticed the, the decline in her behavior she's in bed all day every day uh she you know kind of barely attends school I got her an accommodation to uh attend virtually and she barely does that but um I I, I don't even know what to do at this point um I I I, I don't know because I I, I Basically, I've done it all, and to you know, to to get her to finally to have shown some progress, and then hear her say this just yesterday. I don't, I don't know what to do. It's okay, Mama. To hear her say what yesterday? What did she say yesterday? That she don't even know she's gonna be here. So why even you know? Okay, does she have normal yeah. intelligence? Your 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 daughter? Yes. Okay, yeah. and you said you're in New York, right? Yes. Uh, what borough? I'm in the Bronx. You're in the Bronx. Um, I need to meet with you and your daughter. I'm going to be in Newark, New Jersey on Sunday, July the 14th. That's about two weeks. Um, I might need y'all to come to Jersey and we need to meet somewhere privately, the three of us. To talk about this, process this, and decide what we're going to do going forward. Uh, do you drive? I do. Okay. I do. <clears throat> talk to your daughter about that. Say, Dr. Umar wants to meet with you and I uh, when he comes to New Jersey on Sunday, July the 14th. So we can plot, okay. plot some kind of a plan forward. Okay. And once you I talk to her, I want you to text me and let me know if we're definitely going to meet on the 14th. And we'll either meet before my event or after my event. Okay. Okay. All right. Don't forget. I won't. Okay, I Queen. Won't. I got you. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, now. All right. Okay. Mm. Brother Ryan, this is Dr. Umar. Uh, did you call, uh, did, did you have a question about a child? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I was calling, uh, Your voice sound a little blurry. You got an earpiece in my brother or, or you on speaker? You sound kind of blurry. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to get out. Uh, I'm going to tell you, Donna. Uh, All right. I'm doing well, brother. Yes, I, I, uh, Where you base that? Where you base that? Where you based at? Uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. Okay, so you where I'm at. All right. Go go right ahead, yeah. bro. Yeah, I'm I'm dealing with a battle that's uh it's, it's constantly been it's been like five years. And uh basically what's going on is my uh I, I got access to my daughters, but it's like I cannot see my son for nothing in the world. And that's my only boy, like you know what I'm saying? It's my youngest child. You know what I'm saying? And, I'm, and I know what's, what's ahead of me, and I know I need to be more hands-on. Like, but it's like the battle is every time I try to do something with him, it's an excuse or it's a problem. And I come from, like, you could say, like, a, a violent background, and I don't even want to go in, in, in that realm there. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, like, I just, I just want to 
have an opportunity to to be with my son. You know? Right. Have you been to family court, good brother? Huh? Family court. Have you been to family court? Oh, yeah, that's my that's my next thing. You know yeah, you got to go to family thing. court because you don't want to do the violence, man. I, you know, we don't want no domestic abuse at all. Right, 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 right. And I think, I think, oh, I mean, you know, think that I've I changed a lot, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, when you go to seeing old things, old habits, old form habits, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm, 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 I'm older now, so I understand that. I understand the reward of this stupidity too much, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, I would go to family court. You know, you're going to have to practice some patience, you know, because they're not real sensitive to the, you know, concerns of black men. But, uh, right. you know, I would go to family court, get my partial, you know, or my split custody, you know what I mean, right. and uh, take it that way. That way it's out of her hands, yeah. you know. Um, now the court is responsible to enforce that. So I, I yeah, would definitely go the family court route, my brother. I, I would not do nothing else because, you know, we don't, want anything else being done you know we don't want violence against the sisters and that's also a felony right, right, right. you right. know so yeah i i would i would go the legal route i would go the legal route yeah and that's really well, that's that's confirmation because that's actually what i was going to do to get up i was getting up this morning and that's what i was going to do for that emotion yes so sir i appreciate that man i appreciate you know what i'm saying verification you know it's not nothing else no problem brother no problem all right, all right king be safe all right. Okay, let's see who we got. Uh, thank you for being you. You're a great guy. Appreciate you. Okay. I think that's it, family. So in conclusion, for today's Black Parent Teleconference, I want to let everybody know the King Kong of Consciousness. I'm in New Orleans today. I have two meet and greets, two meet and greets in Louisiana. We got two meet and greets in Louisiana. The first meet and greet is going to be in Gretna. The first meet and greet is going to be at the Dimensions Beauty and Barber Supply. The first meet and greet is going to be at the Dimensions Beauty and Barber Supply from 4 until 6 in Gretna, Louisiana. Let me give you that number. French Quarter. We in the French Quarter family. Hold on. 1136 Franklin Avenue, Gretna, Louisiana. Today from 4 until 6. Black owned beauty and barber supply. Black owned beauty and barber supply. 1136 Franklin Avenue in Gretna, Louisiana. Today. From 4 until 6. Okay, 25% off all self-care and body products. Text me for the flyer, 215-989-9858. Text me for the flyer, 215-989-9858. And then meet and greet networking party, 7 until 9, Africa Love Store, 3110 Magazine Street. 3110 Magazine Street, Africa Love Store. You don't need to RSVP for either one. All you got to do is show up. Bring your black ass on out. No RSVP, no tickets, just show on up. Black owned beauty and barber supply in Gretna, Louisiana, 46. Africa Love Store, 3110 Magazine Street, 7 until 9. Melanin drip. Melanin drip. The sun is out. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The sun is out. Okay. Where are my Ypsilanti Michigan Africans at? Am I saying that correct? Ypsilanti, Ypsilanti. How do y'all pronounce that family? 
Y P S I L A N T I Ypsilanti. I will be there August 2nd and 3rd, Ypsilanti, Michigan. Not New York, Michigan. Ypsilanti, Michigan. 20 minutes from the Detroit airport. I will be there August 2nd and 3rd. Columbia, South Carolina. Where my Columbia, South Carolina Africans at? Where my Columbia, South Carolina Africans? I will be in Columbia, July 23rd to the 25th. I will Columbia, South Carolina, July 23rd to the 25th. Brendan Depper protests, August the 6th. Breakfast Club, July the 9th. I will be back at the Breakfast Club with DJ Envy and Charlemagne on July the 9th. Charlotte, North Carolina, September the 22nd. Oslo, Norway, in Sweden. Where my European Africans at? Where my European Africans at? Oslo. Oslo, Norway, in Sweden, first week of September. We rolling, baby. I need a massage. Where the black owned massage sisters at in New Orleans? Where the black owned massage parlors in New Orleans? I need a back massage. New Orleans. New Orleans, I need a back massage. Where is the professional masseuses? Biological women, professional masseuses. London, England, August 11th, King Kong. London, England, August 11th, King Kong. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy.